So to do this, all you need to do is go into the bathroom, make sure no one's there, <laughs> right? stand in front of the mirror and just look at yourself in the mirror and go, you know what, you got this. Oh yeah. Hey there, good looking. I like that haircut. Welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed, the podcast that helps you speak and present with rock star confidence. I'm Christina Cantors, your host and founder of The C Method Communication Skills Training. For free resources and to subscribe to the show, visit thecmethod.com. Hi there, Rockstar, and welcome to Stand Out Get Noticed. My name's Christina Cantors. This is a very special bonus episode. It's a recording of a workshop that I delivered at the annual D73, that's District 73, Toastmasters convention that happened last week. And my presentation was called How to Build Unshakable Confidence as a Speaker. Now, this is a bonus episode because it's completely raw and unedited. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll be able to hear what a live presentation sounds like and how I go about running my workshops. Now, just a note, there is a section where I do my introduction, like an intro to me, where you have to see the slides and you'll hear what I mean in a moment. And if you're keen to see what the slides actually look like and how it worked in conjunction with what I was saying, I've put together a video of, it's not a video of me, but it's a video of the slides with the audio over the top. And I'm going to put that video in the show notes of this episode at thecmethod.com slash convention. So if you want to see how I did my fast intro, um, go to thecmethod.com slash convention. Now, if you are a Toastmaster and we're at the convention, and this is the very first time that you've listened to this podcast, welcome. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you do get something out of this episode, please share it with your Toastmasters clubs and anyone else who you think would benefit. Okay, let's get to it. My Toastmasters convention workshop on how to build unshakable confidence as a speaker. Christina Cantor, so amazing. Can we keep the applause going for Shannon? I, I threw her in the deep end there, so thank you very much, Shannon. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here. District 73? Yeah. Look, I know it's 4.30 p.m. on a Saturday and you're all feeling a little bit, you know, maybe lacking energy, but come on, let's hear it. Let's hear it for District 73. And you'll go, Woo! I like that. This is my very first Toastmasters convention. Look, I got my little virgin badge. <laughs> I was told that if I wore this, people would be more nice to me. I think it's working. You're doing all, you're doing okay. No, really excited to be here. Who here came, who here's from Melbourne? Okay, most who here's from overseas, uh, in, in, interstate? Few, well done, give them a round of applause. Coming in from interstate. Anyone from further interstate? No? Okay, all right. Today's session, as you can see, it's all about helping you to build unshakable confidence as a speaker. Now, a few years ago, I was an architecture student, and well, more than a few years ago, actually, now. And at the end of the semester, we had to present our designs. Do we have any architects or designers in the audience? No. One, one guy. High five, man. Okay. Design, not I. Design. With a design project, it is very stressful. And by the end of semester, you are sleep deprived, you're stressed, you're a little bit scruffy. And you get up to present your work. And I remember this one occasion where I sat there and I watched my classmates get up one by one to present their work. And I looked on in horror as one by one, their designs and their work were, was ripped to shreds by a particularly harsh tutor. You can see how engaged everyone is. It's uni presentations, it's amazing. I wish I was there. Six years of my life. And as I saw this happen, all I could think of was, what awful things is she gonna say about my work? My hands got clammy, my, my stomach tied up in knots, and my heart was pounding furiously. And by the time I got up to present, I was a ball of nerves. I was physically shaking. And I rushed through my presentation. I can't even remember what I said. And at the end of it, I didn't go back to my seat. Rather, I ran out of the room to the bathroom 
where I burst into uncontrollable sobs. Frankly, I don't even think my presentation went that badly. But I'd worked myself up into such a frenzy that my mind and my body simply could not cope. Fast forward, February last year. I'm in the Philippines on a month-long speaking tour with Rotary International. And I'm speaking to various universities around Manila on the topics of entrepreneurship and communication. And I'm speaking on, at one particular gig to an audience of 500 graduate students, my biggest audience ever. And I was going fine, and, and at the end, we had Q&A. One girl stands up and says, Miss Christina, we're here, we see in your bio that you like to sing. <laughs> Can you sing us a song? Now there's a table topic for you in front of 500 strangers. I, I had to do it, I had to do it. What else was I to do? So I stood there and I belted out my best rendition of, I still call Australia home. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not a professional musician, okay? This is not something that I do normally. And of course, I, I had a, you know, I got a standing ovation for that, which was amazing. And, I, and I, when I ran off the stage, I didn't run to the bathroom and cry. Rather, I ran to take selfies with my new adoring fans. <laughs> and I remember thinking in that moment how far I'd come as a speaker. And to be able to be confident enough to not only speak in front of a group, but sing in front of a group, impromptu, mind you, of 500 people. It didn't, it didn't just happen. You see, back when I was a crumbling mess in the bathroom at my university, I had vowed to myself that I would never allow an experience like that to happen to me again. And so I did everything in my power to learn about the skill of speaking. And during that time, it didn't take me long to realize that confidence can be treated in the same way. Because confidence is important. Because yes, you may know the skills, you may know how to structure a presentation or pace yourself or use your body language, all that good stuff that Toastmasters, Toastmasters teaches us. But if your mindset isn't in the right place, and if your nerves get the better of you, it's going to hold you back from fulfilling your potential and from being as effective as you possibly could be. It's been said that public speaking is only 20% skill and 80% psychology. And that's why I'm so excited to be here with you today to share with you about that 80% of psychology. Now, before we get to that, so I just want to know who here is relatively new to Toastmasters? Fantastic. So, so you're probably maybe here because you want to build up that confidence to do your first few speeches. Maybe you've done a few and you're like, oh, okay, I just want to get to that next level. It's great. Who here is a seasoned Toastmaster? Fantastic. So you might be thinking you want to take your speaking skills to the next level. Maybe you want to set a new challenge for yourself. Okay, what I'm about to share with you today, I'm going to give you powerful, simple but powerful things that you can implement right now and as you leave this room to help you continue on with your journey of becoming an unshakably confident speaker. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yes? Fantastic. Now, before we get to that, in case you're wondering who's this random chick with the Lego hair, I am going to just give you a really quick intro to my background, my context so you know where I'm coming from, yeah? Make sure you watch the screen, this will be really quick. So this is me, I'm this many years old, I was born here, I like doing this, this and this, I like eating this, this and this. I studied here, became an architect, read this book, said this, moved here, started this podcast, traveled the world, came back here, started dating this guy, joined Toastmasters, launched a podcast, launched a business, won a business competition, did a few more speaking gigs and now I'm here. I'm a big believer that communication is critical to your success. And I've seen this at work, I see this with my clients. A lot of the people I work with, they're high performing professionals who are great at what they do. Uh, perfect example, architects, engineers. Who went to Jenny Bailey's presentation before? Yeah, so she was talking about engineers and how they lack those communication skills. It's the same with architects. So this is why I, I'm doing what I do now. 
and I help my clients to get out of their heads and to, and to really fulfill their potential through being effective, strong communicators. And I'm, what I'm going to share with you today is, is exactly what it is that I help my clients with. All right, let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is to know your value. Oh, and I do have these worksheets for you. I designed them myself. You fill them in as you go. I was once at a communication skills training event, and there was one woman there who, when she spoke, she spoke with her shoulders over like this, her head down, and she spoke so quietly. You could barely hear her. Later, she revealed to us that as a child, she'd been told, you have nothing interesting to say, and no one wants to listen to what you have to say. That really hurt, that, that broke my heart. Because those words in that one instance had stuck with her throughout her entire adult life and it affected her confidence in all areas. If you don't believe that what you have to say is truly valuable and that's truly useful and interesting for people, it's very difficult to stand up in front of a group and speak with confidence. So knowing your value is absolutely important. And there's a simple way that you can, that you can find this. I want you to, so write this down. You're going to find three people who know you well, at least three people. And you're going to ask them two questions. How many? Two. Good. You're still here. Love that. The first one is, what do I do well? Find at least three people who know you well. Ask them, what do I do well? Then the second question is, now this second question is particularly important because someone's going to tell you what you do well, and that's great. You may already know that. We're all pretty, you know, we all sort of know what our strengths are. But the value is the important bit. Because what, when you find out that what you do is, is important and affects them in a particular way, that's when you know the true value. So I asked all my podcast listeners this. I sent out an email. I said, hey, guys, what do I do well? Why is this important? One lady wrote back, and she said, Christina, I think you play the ukulele well. Okay, I play the ukulele on my podcast for those of you, of you who listen. And she said, and this is important to me because it shows me that you can be silly and you can be funny and still be successful and taken seriously as an entrepreneur. And in fact, you've inspired me to start my own business. <sighs> just from playing the ukulele. <laughs> I couldn't find any theme music, so I thought I'd just play my own. So that was one thing that I had no idea I was impacting someone on that level. And it's the same for all of you. So someone might tell you, oh, you, you, know, you, work, well, you work well in a team. Okay, well, why is that important? Well, it inspires me to also build better relationships with my colleagues and also inspires me to build better relationships with my family. Whoever knew. So find people, ask you, uh, find people who know you well and ask those questions. Is it just me or is it really warm in here? All the rooms are really warm. Can, could you pop out and have a chat to the staff? Oh. oh. Yeah, the other room was like this as well. All right. Fantastic. So that's, so that's what we're doing for that. Oh, and another thing that you can do, I don't know if you can read that, but they're, they're just some nice emails that I've got from people. When someone says something nice, or someone, someone writes you something nice, this is what I do. I take a snapshot of it, a screenshot, and I save it in a folder called Crush It. So I've got this folder called Crush It. It's got all the nice stuff in there. And whenever I'm having a bit of a shitty day, I just go into that folder and I read through all the wonderful things that people have said about me. And it's a nice little boost. So if you can start to build up a bank of, of, of proof that you offer value to others, this will really help with your confidence as well. Okay, you're going to need your second worksheet here, the one with the little diagram on it. Now, one thing that holds a lot of people back when they get up to speak is that they think that their audience is somehow judging them or thinking terrible things about them. Does anyone felt that before? Well, they think, oh, they're not going to like what I have to say. Oh, I don't know. They're going to think I'm not very knowledgeable. And this message of this image of the audience we paint in our heads can really hold us back. So what I want you to do is I want you to 
take that, that picture of the, little, of the little faces and I want you to fill in the faces of the most negative audience that you could possibly imagine, okay? What are they, what do their faces look like? What are they thinking? I want you to draw speech bubbles. I'm gonna give you a minute to do this, so do this right now. What are they thinking? Oh, the most negative audience you could possibly imagine. Are they asleep? Get as creative as you can. Oh, I'm seeing devil horns, I like that. Ooh, that's really negative. The most negative audience you could possibly imagine. I want you to write down thought bubbles. So what's the most negative audience thinking about you right now? What are they thinking? All right, who's done? You're done? Okay, you can finish this off later. Are you getting really detailed with it? Are you, are you drawing some? Okay, I'm liking this. All right, now what I want you to do is look at the next diagram on your page and then you're going to fill out the most positive picture of your audience. So the most positive audience you could possibly imagine. What do their faces look like? What are they thinking? Oh, I'm seeing some happy arms. If you can draw in their bodies, draw in their arms, up in the air, excited. Who needs more time? Do you? Okay, you got 30 more seconds. Alrighty, wrapping it up guys, you can finish this up later in your own time. But for the moment, I want you to have a look at those two pictures that you just drew. Have a look at it, hold it up. Have a look at those pictures. Have a look at them. Now I want you to think, did you make up both of these pictures, yes or no? Did they come from your imagination, yes or no? Do you know if either of these are true, yes or no? Yes or no? No. We don't know if they're true because we just made them up from here. Now, if you're not feeling confident and maybe you've gone up and not done a good job with the presentation, which picture of those do you think you were choosing to believe? The positive or the negative one? Negative. The negative one. Now, why would you choose to believe this one? Does it serve you to believe the negative photo, the negative picture? No. So why on earth would you choose to believe it? Now, look at the positive picture. Can you imagine if you went into every speaking situation, every presentation, believing, choosing to believe that your audience is that positive picture. If you walked into every presentation going, you know what, this, I believe this is what my audience is like. Do you think that would make a difference to how you presented, yes or no? Yes. yes. So what I want you to do now is tear that piece of paper in half along the dotted line. So tear it in half. So you've got these two pictures. And I want you to have a look at that negative picture. And I want you to make a decision that, you are, that there is no room in your mind for this negative picture. It does not serve you having this picture in your mind and choosing to believe it. So I want you to look at that negative picture and I want you to scrunch it up. I want you to shred it up. Good, scrunch it, scrunch it. Stare it into pieces. Throw it away. Throw it like a monkey. Yes. Burn it later. Do whatever it is. Get rid of the picture because this picture does no longer exist anywhere. Okay? And that positive picture you got, I love that. Throw it around. That's it, to the back of the room. Like that, back of the room. And that positive picture, I want you to hold it up and I want you to hold on to that picture. And maybe you might want to stick this photo up somewhere on your desk or something and just have that as a reminder to yourself that you can choose to believe what your audience thinks of you, okay? Has, is anyone here good at something? Oh, come on, everyone put your hands up. We're all good at something. When you first started doing that thing, like the very first time you did that thing, were you amazing at it? No. no. So when I had long hair, this is a couple of years ago, um, I was walking along Ligon Street, just up here near the Gelati store actually, 
And I saw this old man and he was busking on the street corner with his terrible microphone. He was, he was terrible. He was, he was the worst singer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Yet in that moment, I was inspired. I thought, if he can do it, surely I can do it too. Can't be that hard, right? I got a ukulele for Christmas. I sang in choir in high school. Pfft, I can do this. So the next day I went out and got a busking license. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, the pressure was on. And I started practicing songs after song after song. And my internal voice kept saying to me, Christina, no, you can't do this. You're not good enough yet. You don't know enough songs. And I procrastinated and procrastinated and procrastinated. And it took me six months before I finally got myself down to DeGrave Street. And I was trying so hard in my mind to be great, to be at this certain level, to know this many songs before I would actually go out and do the thing. But it held me back from actually taking action. Zig Ziglar once said that you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. And at the start of this two-hour busking session that I did, I made mistakes but I recovered from them. I, I stumbled. When people gave me money, I tried to say thank you, but I'd mess up my song. But by the end of it, by the end of the two hours, my confidence had built up to the point where I was able to incorporate random lyrics in my songs as people walked past. And I'd sing to people as they'd walk past. So instead of going, because the haters want to hate, 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 hey, baby, I was going, hey, sir, I like your T-shirt. Thanks for your donation. Like, just random stuff. But I had the confidence to do that, but I wouldn't have got there if I hadn't started. So I want you to think, if you find yourself procrastinating over maybe giving that next speech, maybe it's your icebreaker, maybe it's that 10th speech, or maybe it's moving on to the next manual, whatever it is, even at work, if you find yourself hesitating over putting your hand up to go for that new job opportunity or running that team meeting or whatever it is, that thing that scares you, because you're waiting to be great to do it, don't wait, because you're not going to become great unless you start doing that, OK? Oh, I like this one. <laughs> I remember I was once speaking to this woman at an event, and she was telling me how much she loved her job. She's like, it's really satisfying. Um, my, I love supporting my husband. I said, also, what do you do? She said, oh, I'm just a PA. And I said, hang on, you, you're just a PA? You just told me how much you love your job and how proud of it you are. <coughs> I said, you're not just a PA. You make the bosses look good. She's like, oh, yeah. I said, without you, they're nothing. And this is something I've heard a lot. I've heard people say, oh, I'm just, I've just graduated. Oh, I'm just a hairdresser. Oh, I'm just new. The words that we use have a really powerful impact on the way that we think. You may not realize it, but it does. And we form these habits, these patterns, where we repeat things over and over again to ourselves. And, and our internal voice, soon that, that becomes the truth. It becomes our reality. So if you're telling yourself that you're not good at something or that, that people won't like me, oh, I'm, 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 I'm still not great, or oh, I am too much, that's going to then impact on your confidence and the way that you deliver. OK? So, I want you to start being, oh, is that air conditioning? Air. Come on, air. <laughs> Give me air. I really don't feel like it's made a difference. Do you? Can you pop out? This is my sister, everyone. Give her a round of applause. She, um, yeah, Lise, she's been helping me film this and everything, which is great. And she, then she, now she's going to help us get some air in here. Because this, this is ridiculously hot. Um, where was I? Language. OK, so what I want you to do is be, just be more aware of the, the words that you're using with yourself. When you finish a presentation, are you beating yourself up about it? When you go home after a meeting, are you thinking, oh, I should have done this. Why are you such an idiot? You, you didn't speak up. I want you to stop beating yourself up about these things and talk to yourself as if you talk to a friend. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure most of us would not speak to our friends the way that we speak to ourselves sometimes, OK? So watch the language that you use with yourself. 
and do this. Like with that positive negative picture, you have the ability to just determine what thoughts go into your head, okay? So you better make them useful thoughts that serve you and not, not thoughts that harm you. Now I want to, as soon as I'm talking about language, I just want to talk about body language because the way our bodies are and the, the, the positions they're in also impact our confidence. And okay, we've all seen the power posing stuff, right? We've all seen the, who's seen the power posing thing, the power posing stuff? Who hasn't seen the power posing stuff? Okay, so I thought this is a thing, but there's a great TED talk. For those of you who haven't seen it, there's a great TED talk on, um, on how our body changes the mind. And they did all this research where they found that people who stood in power pose positions actually uh, decreased their cortisol levels and it made them more, feel more powerful and confident when they went to speak. And those who sat in small hunched over positions, I can see all you like sitting up now, it actually increased their cortisol, so their stress hormone, and made them feel weaker and less powerful when, when they got up to speak. And they, they did this study with people in job interviews and everything. So the idea is that you stand in a power pose for two minutes, they actually put a number on it, two minutes, before a nerve-wracking situation, and it'll help to calm you down. Does anyone here use power posing? Okay, got a few, so you, do you find that it helps? Absolutely, it helps. So what we're gonna do is we're all gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of power posing right now. So I want you to all stand up. Wait, 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 sit down, sit down, guys, sit down, sit down, sit down. Look, I know it's, it's 5 p.m. on a Saturday. It's a little bit warm in here, right? But I know you're all really excited to be here, but this is what I get. Oh, stand up. Oh, oh, God, my back. Oh, I want to see a little bit of oomph, a little bit of energy, a little bit of pizzazz. So everybody, you ready? Yes, everybody stand up. Oh, I love that, fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we normally have a picture of like Beyonce or someone, but I want you to picture Beyonce, Wonder Woman, Incredible Hulk, standing nice and big with your feet nice and solid, shoulders back, chin up, and we're going to hold this position, and Lizzie's going to play some music, and we're going to hold this position for the next two minutes. You know it. So that's it. So everyone hold that. I'm going to come around and check you. I should not be able to push you over. Very good. Hold it, very good, I like that, fantastic. Nice and strong, my nice shoulders, very good. Chest up, like that, very nice. Oh, you're jumping around, I like that, very good, fantastic. Okay. Can you pause it? Okay. Ooh. Okay, so, I want you to hold this, hold this. Now. This is something that you can do. Now, I, I like to do this as well. Keep it, hold it, hold it there, hold it there. So to do this, all you need to do is go into the bathroom, make sure no one's there, <laughs> right? stand in front of the mirror, and just look at yourself in the mirror and go, you know what, you got this. Oh yeah, hey there, good looking. I like that haircut. Whatever it is, you look at yourself, and you hold that position. If there's someone there, just go into a cubicle. <laughs> Another thing you can do is if you're driving, and I know Shannon does this well, when she's sitting down, before Shannon gets up, she told me before, before she gets up to speak at, a, at her club, she sits like this in her chair, like really, like make yourself big. I like to do that maybe on the tram or the train, you sit there, you make yourself big, okay? But something I've been doing recently that I find is even more effective. Okay, you can, you can relax, but step, it's keep standing, keep standing. Uh, what, what I like to do is I like to put on some really big headphones, pump a really high energy song, and dance like a maniac. In my, does anyone do this? Oh, I love that, you guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do, before you all start groaning, I want you to get into groups of four or five, Within, within your rows or whatever's easiest for you, with the people near you. So get into groups of four or five. You got ten seconds. Go. Everyone got a group? I'm gonna play the music soon. Not, not, not yet, but soon. And then I want one person. I want one person in each group to put their hand in the air. One person in each group. That person, that person is the leader. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Get up and dance on the chair. No, I'm just kidding. 
Now, that person who's the leader, who had their hand up, they are going to do their best 80s aerobics dance moves. Okay? And listen up, listen up, everyone else in the group around them, listen up, listen up, everyone else in the group around them is going to follow them. Okay? So you're copying the leader. And I want you to give it everything you've got. We're going to put on some music on. Ready, set, go. Let me see some crazy moves. Throw some crazy moves. There we go. That's it. Copy, copy. Very good. I like that. Very good. I like that. Switch leaders! Switch leaders! Rotate! One new person! Very good! You've been amazing. <laughs> Who feels like they're ready to take on the world? Yeah. Oh yeah. So before and before a nerve-wracking situation, this could be a job interview, this could be a Toastmaster speech, whatever it is where you're feeling a little bit nervous, I want you to check your body language. Are you are you sitting there like this? Because this prevents flow of oxygen to your brain, and you need your brain to speak well, okay? Um, and you all like slump down in your seats, so I want you to keep that energy up as you sit down. This is the same thing for when you're sit sitting. Let's just ignore the fact that it's a sauna in here. Like, let's just pretend, okay? Um, whoever was asking about the mental blank, who was asking about that mental blank? The reason why we have mental blanks is because when we get nervous, we freeze up physically. And when, you free, when we freeze up, we stop breathing. We, that's our fear response because we're nervous. But when you stop breathing, it stops the flow of oxygen to your brain, which means that your thoughts freeze up as well. So the best thing that you can do to avoid a mental blank, apart from trust that you'll remember your opening line, like our friend <laughs> David over here does, you need to take some deep breaths just to allow that flow of oxygen to go, to go through, okay? So do you think you can do that? Yes? Yeah. It's easy, deep breaths. If you're sitting there at a table, you just breathe in through your belly, no one can even tell you're doing it. And I do it every single time, and it's really, really effective. So deep breaths, it'll help with that mental blank. So if you're gonna, so you can either power pose or dance like a maniac, whatever it is, make sure you get into that physical, like upbeat, positive, energetic, physical state. And by the time you go to your presentation or whatever it is, you're like, yeah! And you walk in and you're like pumped, right? <laughs> That's exactly what you want. You can't go from this to, hi everyone, you just can't. Think about it as you're warming up. You know, sprinters don't go zero to a sprint. They have to warm up. And it's exactly the same with, with, our, with our energy levels. How are we doing for time? Okay. This is the final thing I'm gonna share with you today. A lot of people, when they get up to present to a group, they focus on the people who don't like them. They focus on that negative part of the audience, the people who they know, oh, they're not thinking nice things about me. And I've discovered this rule of 33%, which states that in any audience, 33% of people will like you, 33% of people probably won't like you, and 33% will be on the fence, so they're undecided. Now, the mistake that most people make is that they speak to the 33% who don't like them. Because they go, oh, they already like me, that's fine. But I want these people to like me, so they try really hard to be liked by these people. But what happens is that they, they start to be inauthentic, and they say things they wouldn't normally say, and they behave in a way that's not true to them, because they, just, they try to change themselves to be liked by these people. And do you think these people start to like them? No, because they're being really weird. 
And then these people are like, what's going on with Christina? She cut her hair. I don't know. I liked her old hair. I don't know what's going on. And then the people who were on the fence, they now really don't like you. Now, a better option is to speak to the 33% of people who already like you. And it's easy to tell who those people are because they're smiling. They're in the front row. They're taking notes like this. And you go, yep, you're my 33%. They're the ones going, yeah. You can tell who those people are. So if you focus on those and go, all right, I'm going to find the people who are my 33% and I'm going to talk to them. And the positive feedback they'll give you will then help you to build up your confidence. And that'll, that'll continue to fuel, to fuel you. And then as a result of that, you'll be able to speak with more authenticity. You'll be able to speak more true to who you are and you'll, you'll be more of that thing that those people already like. And then a funny thing starts to happen. The people who are undecided, they go, that side of the room looks like they're having, looks like they're having a bit of fun. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll just jump over onto the Christina train. Maybe we'll, we'll like her. We want to be part of the cool group. And you may even turn some of the grumpy bums over here. Okay? <laughs> but here's the thing. If you can accept that not everyone is going to like you, not everyone is going to resonate with you and your ideas. Not everyone likes dancing with strangers at a conference. And in fact, I had to consider that and I thought, but you know what? If they don't like dancing, then that's fine with me. Because the people who really like dancing will really like it. And that's what I want. And I would much rather polarize people than water my message down to appeal to every single person. So I'm going to leave you here today with... I just want you to think about what's something that you're going to implement. Because there's a few things that we've discussed today. And maybe you go out and you find those people who know you well and you ask them, what do I do well? And why is that important to you? Maybe you take that picture of your positive audience and you, and you stick it on a wall somewhere. Maybe you draw it, make it really big and keep that as your focus. Maybe you say yes to something and you just get started without worrying about how you're going to do it or without worrying that you have to be great first. Maybe you start writing down some positive things that you can say to yourself or power posing in the shower. Maybe you can start in the shower. But, you know, it's a safe place. <laughs> or maybe you start focusing on those 33% of people who are already your supporters. But as you implement these things, you don't have to do all of them at once. I like to say that you implement one thing. And as you start to implement, then that will become natural. It will become easier. And you'll, you'll start to do it naturally. And, then, and the more that you can start to implement those things, that's how you start to build unshakable confidence, not only as a speaker, but also in your relationships, at work, and in life. Thank you. Like Shannon mentioned, I have a podcast. It's called Stand Out, Get Noticed. And I shared my tips on public speaking, confidence, communication. So if you liked what you heard today and you like my style and you're my 33%, then go subscribe to the podcast because there's lots more where, where this came from. Also, I've put a page together just for you guys who came here today. I'm so appreciative for you joining me. The cmethod.com slash D73. It's on your handout there. I put together a compilation of some of my podcasts and other resources related to public speaking and confidence. So if you want to learn more, then go check out that page. There's a bunch of free resources there for you as well. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm, you know, have a chat now or connect with me on, on the socials. Thanks so much again. There you go, my Toastmasters convention workshop on how to build unshakable confidence as a speaker. For more resources on public speaking, make sure you visit thecmethod.com slash public speaking. That's thecmethod.com slash public speaking. I have links there to my free speech writing template, my free public speaking mini course, and my Overcome Public Speaking Anxiety training program. So if you enjoyed this and you want to learn more about how to be more confident as a speaker and also how to plan and prepare a really effective and compelling presentation, make sure you check it out, thecmethod.com slash public speaking.
Okay, thank you so much for joining me for this very special bonus episode. I was excited to share it with you. I hope you'll join me again on Wednesday morning, that's Tuesday night for my North American friends, when the regular podcast returns. Until then, keep on being awesome. My name's Christina Canters, and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed.